All right, guys, Adrian Attilio. I don't know if you guys have heard of Adrian Attilio, but uh, not only do they wear the same color shirts every single day so that you know where they are at all times, but Adrian Attilio are some of the top producing agents uh, on Oahu. Um, they are located on the west side, but they don't specialize in just on the west side. They, they've, they do short sales, they do luxury, they do VA, first time home buyers. I think some of the reason for their success is uh, due to having a system and a model that they follow to a T. And this new series that we're going through, which this is session one, Win With Buyers, um, we're gonna talk about some of the models that Keller Williams has and, and really some of the secret ingredients that both Attilio and Adrian uh, like to drop in to make sure that they achieve unbelievable success. So for those of you guys who, who don't know you, do you guys wanna take a quick 20 seconds and just introduce like who, who are you how long you've been in the business um what makes you guys so amazing Go ahead, sure. well i was just going to mention there was one other kind of property that you left out our sixty-seven thousand dollar leasehold that we just closed on C congratulations thank you <laughs> so i i've been licensed for a little over 16 years and uh, originally from the DC metro area, joined the military right after September 11th. This was my first duty station. And after becoming a mom, decided that being in the army was not really the best place for me at that time. So got out and started helping people build wealth through real estate. Yeah. And, um, and here we are. I remember here I was at a uh... We had a regional, KW Regional out in uh, Hawaii Kai, and, and uh, opening entertainment was the, the brothers. And the brothers, they opened up this question, oh, how many Hawaiians in the room? And I like, I think I was the only guy to raise a hand. And he goes, oh, that's how come you guys lost all the land? But anyway, so I'm here to represent in this meeting for today. The Hawaiian. The, I'm the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian. The you talking know, Hawaiian. I, I wasn't even on Hawaiian time. I came early. So this is like our third class that we're teaching today, just today along with our third Zoom. So I promised that I was not gonna bore you guys with my vocal warm-ups. La, 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 pop, pop, pop. I was not, I promised, I was not gonna do my vocal warm-ups for you before I started to the class. So I wanted to keep that promise. But anyway, local boy, born and raised, we're here to make you guys laugh and learn at the same time because I, I think laughing and learning you retain more. It's a proven study. Yep. Okay. Hey, on that note. You ready? Take yes. it away. Okay. But well, we do have a question for you guys, and you can either come off mute or, or chat it in. What uh, What are you guys hoping to achieve with this with this series? Yes. Or with this with this particular segment of the Win with Buyers. Yeah. So type them in the chat. Tap them in the chat because we're all going to be monitoring the chat because, you know, what? I, I hate when you do these kind of training sessions and the instructor's just talking about what they want to talk about. A good instructor, a good teacher is going to incorporate what you guys want to know into the process. You know, what are your mm -hmm. challenges with working with buyers? All righty. And then I just want to give a shout out. We have, we got, I don't know if we have our Maui productivity coach, but we got our Honolulu productivity coach, Lisa. Lisa's mm -hmm. on here tons of experience and how we've done it before with our other classes we like lisa what are your thoughts chad what are your thoughts because we don't want it to be the adrian and atilio show because every and you know what you guys chiming in on the chat you guys are helping information flow is going to go both ways it's going to come from us through the zoom and you guys are going to be zooming you know chatting back to us zoom chat okay all right here we go we are uh oh can you guys give me the screen sharing screen sharing yeah, sorry about that. Let me That's do that okay. right now. So as we're doing this, I just want to let you guys know that we're going to go fast because typically this class, we said, you know what, let's make it super boring and like three hours long. Yeah, I think no. normally the class is three hours long. Yeah, so we said, you know what, let's just make it fast, entertaining and very, you know, a lot of, you hit all the high points in one hour. And that's what we're going to do. So if you, if you like zooming and you go to the restroom, turn your camera off for one. <laughs> then come back. But if you go, you're going to miss something because we're going to go fast. We're going to go fast. is saying that for a reason because that has happened. That's okay. That's another, that's another story. That's another story. Never <laughs> talk with you to the Not back. to him, though. 
Yeah, shut off your camera if you guys gotta go to a restroom, right? And don't take your laptop with you. But anyway, uh, so we're gonna, we are going to go fast. I would highly recommend you take notes if there's anything that we have going on uh, that you have a question on. Shoot it over there and we'll address it because we never, we're like the Marines. We never wanna leave any questions behind, okay? All right, here we go. So, uh, and for those of you, I'm just making sure you tuned into the right Zoom. Today, we're gonna to be talking about, we're gonna be talking about ashtray making from ceramics. No, that's not what we're gonna be talking about. I always like to do that because people are like, oh, am I on the right Zoom? We're gonna be talking about leads to appointments. Leads to appointments. And we're gonna be covering a lot of stuff. And the most important thing that I wanna do, I don't wanna share, we are gonna share stuff that we do, but more importantly, I want you guys to know that the stuff that we're gonna share with you that you can do, it doesn't matter if you have a budget or not, right? So we wanna be able to, so I don't want you to be like, oh, the big mega agents, you know, they got all this money and blah, 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 and all of this, I can't do that. Yes, you can, because we were right where you guys were uh, when we started many, many years ago. Okay, um, let me see, I gotta get my right. Can you guys see my screen? Thank you. All right, so this is, uh, there's gonna be seven parts to this buyer series, and we're starting off with the first one, which is the, uh, of the buyer service cycle, which is leads to appointments, okay? So let's get right into it, lead generation, leads, leads everywhere, and I wanna start you guys off with a story. I was on a hike this past weekend, and I got a lead. Now, I know what you're saying, Atilio, how'd you do that? Here's what I wanna point out to you guys, business is everywhere. I was on this hike North Shore and I walked past this guy who was sitting in his car and he comes out and he's like, excuse me, excuse me, sir. And I'm like, yes, how can I help you? And he's like, oh, I got stuck out here at a flat tire and then my spare went flat and I'm wondering, and my phone's about to die. Um, and then he's like, oh, you need help. So I just stopped and started helping him. Anyway, long story short, this guy's named Bill. And uh, uh, what I did was I said, well, I'm gonna walk out of here because I'm on two feet. If I get somewhere and you're still stuck, I'm gonna check on you real quick. I'm gonna send you my contact information. So I'm gonna give you a tip right out, of the, right out of the bat. If you have a phone, here's what I want you to do. Here's your homework assignment. Don't do it right now because while you're doing it, you're gonna miss all these other nuggets we're gonna share with you. Put your content, so get in your favorites. Uh, what is it called on an Android? Somebody tell me, I don't know, somebody text it. What, it's called whatever it is in the Android, but in iPhone, it's a favorites. Put your contact information in your phone and put it at the bottom of your favorites, and that is what's called your electronic business card. The number one tip I can tell you right now, you want people to respond to you, get in their phones, because who's here has received a call and you're like, eh, eh, I'm gonna let them go to voicemail, see what they want, it's probably a salesperson. They're doing the same thing to us. The other thing I give you a tip on, if you don't have an 808 area code, you might wanna think about getting one, because local people, they go like this, oh, Seven or whatever, you know, the, the mainland area code. Ah, I gotta be salesperson. So you might be putting yourself as a disadvantage if you don't wanna give up that Las Vegas zip code or that, you know, Scottsdale, Arizona zip code or whatever zip code. I mean, zip code. Uh, area area code. code. Area code. You guys know what Get I mean. Get a second phone uh, if you really are attached to that area code or that phone number. Yeah. Well, then move back over there and be an agent over there. So but you're here in, the, in, you're here in 808. So. I will tell you with your prospecting, having an 808 area code is gonna be much more helpful. It's gonna at, at least get you to the start point without being in the basement before you even before they even pick up the phone. All right, so leads are everywhere. Chad, where's a where's an unusual place you've gotten a lead? I, I couldn't even hear you cut out. What was that? Where was what? Oh, where where's a place that you've gotten a lead from that was not you know out of the normal as far oh, as getting the weirdest a place. God, the, well not weird, but I mean unconventional, um, the gym. Yeah, I go to the gym every day, so I, the gym is an easy one. I've gotten a few leads there. I tell you, and this is what happened. He had 300 pounds on the bench. He was like, hey, bro, you can spot me. Oh, by the way, you own your own home. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, how come you don't own your own home? I think he had one more. And then he was on the bench press, and he got that lead with that, with that motivated buyer. What about exactly Lisa? Like that. Lisa. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I put in the chat. Back. Hey, bro, you can spot me. Lead generation technique. Lisa, what about you? Uh, you know, I put in the chat my favorite, um, I was such a workaholic, I put in the chat my favorite uh, affirmation, which was everywhere I go, everything I do, business comes to me. So I bought a place you know, up at Lake Berryessa to get some relaxation away from real estate, met some friends, we'd play cards and games, and I ended up listing a house and selling a property off of that, buyer and a seller. Cool. So it's everywhere, so yeah. even on vacation. 
you just can't escape everywhere uh, tony <laughs> you gotta have the money what about you what was your, what was your strangest uh, real estate place i mean uh lead lead place well uh, i used to i don't know if you guys know this about me but i used to play roller derby for quite some time yeah and so i work i really worked the roller derby community and educating them yeah. and you know, helping them with their, their buying and selling needs. So, yeah, I mean, like yeah. that's like an extracurricular activity. You're there for fun, but, you know, you get to know your teammates and they trust you because, you know, you're hip checking them and next thing you know, you're selling their home for them. Yeah, so she was like going around the ring, going around the ring, and the lady's like, oh, who'd you use to buy your last home? Oh, uh, we use this other not, uh, locations agent. Boom, she went flying into the <laughs> thing and hit that home. And she said, but then the next one she came up and was like, oh, I don't have an agent yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, come with me over here. And then she didn't hip check that one. So the bottom, you know, we're having fun with this, but the point of it is business everywhere. And the point I'm making, Tony Robbins, if you guys know Tony Robbins, you don't, you should. Google his videos and stuff. He calls it the RAS, the reticulating activating system. Immediately, if you own a green, if you own a green Pinto and you haven't burst into flames with a light impact from the rear and you still own that Ford green Pinto, you start noticing green Ford Pintos everywhere, especially the ones who haven't caught on fire yet and haven't been recalled. So it's just a matter of, it's not that the Ford green Pintos were not there, it's just you weren't paying attention or being more active about it. So I literally got a lead on a trail on the North Shore, like four miles in the middle of nowhere uh, from this guy and I got in his phone and I have his information, I'm gonna follow up with him. His name's Bob, he does insurance and we just was talking, sorry, I was helping him change his flat and I spent about an hour just, you know, helping him, not even talking about anything. We just got to talking about what we do for a living. All right, so let's get into it. If you had a piece of paper and you're going to draw it, divide it up into three sections for this presentation, here would be the, the three sections. Number one is generation, if you want to write that down. The next part is uh, conversion. And then the last part was going to talk about the, the action that you need to take to, to do all of this stuff. So literally, we're not talking about a buyer consultation here. We're literally talking about lead generation and conversion and, uh, and the action, it, action and the action that you want to get from the generation to the conversion is leading to another word that starts with an A and it is part of your action, which is anybody, anyone? Oh, yes, someone said appointment. That is correct. That is what we're leading to. Um, so the first thing, let's start at the top. Now, what I want you guys to do is write down, um, um, well, you, oh, actually, real quick before we move on, um, Chad and, and, and Lisa and Adrian, you guys all help me out and, and put it in the chat. And I can't see the chat because I'm screen sharing, but what are all the different places that we can get leads from? Facebook. Instagram. LinkedIn. Instagram. LinkedIn. Grocery Back. store. Sphere of influence. Grocery store. Sphere of influence. You know what? If they fog a mirror, talk story with them. Oh. Don't, be a, don't be a secret <laughs> agent. Yes, you know, everyone. Yeah. Cocktail parties, networking, <laughs> yeah. family events. Now, I know the junk monkeys are firing right now. Oh, get COVID-19. You know what? I, I do, do different things. I go, wow, that's a nice mask you've got there. Where'd you get that mask from? I want to get one of those masks. And so you just, you change the way that you are, you know, you know, if you're going to chit chat with somebody, do it from six feet or more away, right? That's the adjustment that we got to do in this pandemic. But I'll tell you, business is everywhere. And you'd be surprised when we open up our minds and our, and our, and our attitudes and have an affirmation that business is everywhere, it starts appearing. It wasn't that it wasn't there. It's there all the time. You just what have about, to be paying attention. What about wearing a color branded mask? Yes. There you go. I'm an agent. You know, um, the, 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 that reminds me of a story of my, my grandfather who owned the nightclub down on Hotel Street, but I'll tell you guys that later. Anyway, um, that's true. We have a, a that's car true. magnet. A car magnet car is good magnet. too, to remind your neighbors. I will tell you right now, I, I, Adrian and I were with our team about 10, 12 years ago, and we were taking professional photos. So I go to the camera guy and I go, camera guy, can you take some funny pictures? Because it would be neat to have professional, funny, funny goofy face pictures so literally on my card magnet i wish i had it here it's on the refrigerator at the at our office but it was like me going like this <laughs> and i'm serious that was my face on my card magnet people would pull up to me at stop signs and they're like like i must be on plenty of people's facebooks because they're like they were taking pictures constantly at stop signs i'd be in the parking lot trying to finish up something and my i had pretty good tinting 
and people are like doing this they're doing selfies with my car magnet in fact one of them got stolen so i guess i'm on somebody's <laughs> refrigerator in their garage on their on their 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 keg refrigerator their kegerator but um um, don't be a, don't, the, the point being is don't be an invisible agent, you know, don't be a, a secret agent. Okay. That's for CIA and the FBI, not for realtors. Okay. Plenty places, able, ready, and willing. Um, I actually kind of want to just boil that down to two words, motivation, motivated and, and, and a bit motivation and ability, motivation and ability. Um, Adrian, what are some indications that someone's motivated? That they're willing to meet with you, that they answer their phone, uh -huh. that they're looking at properties, that they're saving properties. Yeah, Chad, what else is indications that someone's motivated? Um, that they're willing to have a conversation with you about what it is they're looking for, their goals and priorities. I mean, sometimes people uh, are, if they're not motivated, they'll kind of rush you to the answer that they want. No, I just want to know how much, how much is this house? No, just tell me how much, is this house available? How much is it? Um, you want to be able to ask them certain questions to figure out, you know, do you even want to work with that person? Are they even motivated? You don't want to spin your yeah. wheels into getting to something that this person's not qualified uh, or you don't want to meet with them without having a buyer consultation, which we'll get into later as well. Yeah. And, and remember this, it's called the first couple seconds of an inbound call. If somebody's calling you, Hey, I'm calling about the house on 123 Aloha street. And I want to know what's the price. Um, the first question out of your mouth, because again, you got to, you got to train yourself to do this because human nature is Adrian. When I ask you a question, you want to what? You just want to answer it. You want to answer it. It's almost subconscious and automatic and you got to train yourself and, to, and break away from that. Oh, it's $4.99. Don't okay. do it. Ever Don't answer two it. Three bedroom, two bath and it's 1200 square feet. You know what? After that, the buyer's going click. Thank you. So you're what's called a 411 agent. You don't want to do that. The first response to anybody initially when they're checking in either through Zillow or whatever source they're coming to you on a, on a listing should be, oh, wow, we're getting a lot of phone calls on that particular listing. Are you looking to buy a home? Because, you, you know, as agents, we spend like days running around with people, having all these consultations, and you haven't even asked the question, are you looking to buy a home? There's or, what's got, or what's got you interested in this home? Yes. And, and, I, and I just hit him right over the head. I just say, oh, so you're looking to buy a home. Oh, no, uh, I'm the neighbor down the street. I just kind of nearly, I kind of a little bit nosy if they're going to get that price because I think maybe I like sell my home. So they might be a seller. Here's a tip for you. A lot of buyers, uh, a lot of sellers disguise themselves as buyers. Mm -hmm. They do. They wear the hat. They put on the fake mustache. And they're like, oh, no, no, I'm not from down the street thinking about selling my home. I am interested in buying this home. Here's a big one. If they're showing up in an open house, if they're showing, you get a couple wackadoodle people that all, they got nothing better to do than they've been all home sheltering for a long time and they haven't been able to meet some people. So they start going to open houses. But most people are there because they legitimately are in the market of looking for a home. Chad do you, uh, or Adrian, do you, I have a line for when you're at the open house. There's also the first couple seconds of the open house line. Do you know what it is? Uh, well, you say, welcome home. <laughs> I go, welcome home, beautiful. And then I get slapped. No, no, no. Um, uh, what I say is I say, oh, by the way, thank you for coming in today. Are you one of the neighbors or are you out shopping for a home? And we don't say buying because every, nobody likes to buy stuff. Guys buy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, uh, you know, we like to just get in and get out, even gals too. But people love shopping. Shopping is more fun than buying, right? So are you, out, are you one of the neighbors or are you out shopping for a home? That's a pattern interrupt because usually we're jumping on them like, oh, I've been home sheltering for a long time. Were you, you, you buy one home right now or what? So are you one of the neighbors or are you out shopping for a home? Write that one down. Okay. Let's talk about... Um, Motivate, Motivate um, the ability. Motion, motivate, so ability. Okay, we'll hit ability. Uh, what, what defines ability? I will go to, and I was going to go to phone a friend, but I'm going to go with Lisa. Lisa, what determines someone's ability? Ability uh, is that they're financially able to do it. Yes. Financially able. And you that can, means they're qualified and they have the down payment if necessary or, you know, whatever the financial pieces are for them. Yeah, so I'm going to give you the script for this. Again, this is not like, oh, we need this huge budget and we got to have on radio show and TV like Attilio and Adrian. You can have one penny in your pocket, two of them to rub together so you get warm. And you can use this line. Don't cost you anything, okay? 
uh, when you sat down with your lender, what did they tell you? Isn't that a different way of asking it than everybody else does it? Oh, wait, what? You pre-approved or what? What, 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 what? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Oh, you pre-approved. You pre-approved or what? You pre-approved. Instead, we're going to say, when you sat down with your lender, what did they tell you? Adrian, what are the two answers you're going to get when you sat down? So, Adrian, when you sat down with your lender, what did they tell you? Oh, that I'm approved for 800000 And the other answer is? Oh, I haven't sat down with the lender yet. Oh, I haven't sat down with the lender. By the way, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I don't know if you knew this, but that is the very first step in the home buying process. So I'm at this mm -hmm. open house. So get out of here. Go get pre-approved and come back. No, you don't kick them out of the open house. You make sure that they have the ability. By the way, um, Chad, would you, ever, would you ever spend a lot of time in showing homes to someone that doesn't, that's motivated but has no ability? No. not no. All. And, and also the other thing too is you don't know if, I mean, if they don't, if they've not been pre-qualified and in reality they qualify for 500 and you're, and they've met you at a home that's 700, the one way yeah. to look at it too is you're doing them a disservice. Now yes, you're yeah. demotivating them because now they think that they can afford this thing. And then when you go, oh, by the way, you only qualify for 500, they're like, ah, you know what? I'm just going to, I'll yeah. wait. I'm just going to rent. One of the things I tell people is I don't want to show you an $800,000 home when you only qualify for 500,000. So I'd rather crush your dreams now than later on. No, I don't say that last part. I'm just joking with you guys. But it's, it's, it's a way of like saying, hey, last thing you want to do is be going to your significant other and say, oh, you know that house we looked at and the kids was all picking out the rooms. We can't buy that one. We need to go to this other one uh, where the kids are going to be sharing rooms. So um, it's very important to establish ability and then motivation we already talked about. So I'm just going to get on to the next slide. Okay. We have a four-step lead conversion process. So we have capture. Uh, what, what do we want to share, Adrian or Chad? What do we want to share regarding? Uh, capture is, is, it's all about speed, speed to lead. That's it. Say hello. <laughs> if anything, just answer your phone. I will Re tell you the number one. If you get off this Zoom right now, I'll tell you right now, just write this down, answer your phone. Because even if it's, you know what? I tell you right now, even if it's people trying to sell me something, I just call them back and say, hey, you ever thought of being one inside sales agent and doing lead generation? I reverse prospect people all the time. So I love having salespeople call me and then I give them some coaching and then I rewrite their scripts for them. And then, and then who knows, you know what? Maybe I can help them buy a home and wherever. I was like, what city are you calling from? Oh, I'm calling from Cincinnati. Oh, great. I got some good friends that live over there. Do you own your own home? So I reverse prospect salespeople. You know, so be like the Venus five trap when people call you on your phone, answer that phone. And again, the, there's only one word in the number one script. What is it, Adrian? Hello. Hello. Answer your phones. You'd be surprised how um, we get these Zillow leads and we like, boom, we pounce on them. And they're like, what made you decide to choose us? Uh, you answered your phone. Oh, really? Yeah, I called the last three realtors. Nobody answered their phone. And I'm gonna tell you right now, our consumer is gonna like, Oh yeah, I'm just gonna leave a voicemail and then I'll just wait around till they call me back. No. No, and they even sound like yes. that too. They're, they're like, like yes. yes, boom, and they're calling the next one. Okay. So uh, answering your phone is the number one uh, lead capturing technique. What else do we need to have that's important? Let's say it's just a Facebook inquiry or you don't have full contact info. Uh, I I would say having like using your your KW commands and having some uh, automatic responses, right, with the text or with the email auto response, so that you have technology that's working for you, maybe while you're doing other things, and it can respond instantaneously. Yeah, I you know one of my text auto responders is I'm right in the middle of an intense brain surgery situation, and this person's life is literally in my hands. Can I call you back in a couple minutes? No, it just says I'm on the line right now. I'll call you back shortly. Then you got to make sure and get back to them. But at least they know that you must be in the middle of something if you're doing that. But the other thing I would even tell you, like, I mean, don't do it if you're in front of a client. But Chad, did you want to, you came off of me, you wanted to say something? Well, I was going to say, I was just going to say two things. While I think it's super important for you, obviously, to answer your phone, that's the main thing. But what drives me nuts is if it does go to voicemail, the voicemail box is full or oh. there's an automatic message. Those two things drive oh. me bananas. So, I mean, please, if you guys are, if that's you, clear out your voicemail and at least thank the solution. message. I'll, I'll tell you the solution because that's like, that is, that's very annoying. You can lose business. There is a service, we, we use a, a little thing called phone tag. Yeah. And it transcribes your voicemails into an email. So you don't even have to listen to them. You can just read them. 
and then forward it on if it's, you know, doesn't really pertain to you. But the nice thing is that your voicemail is never full. Yeah. Ever. I tell yeah. you right now, a, a voicemail that's not either not set up property, not set up in a professional manner or full will literally cost you probably about $15,000, right? That's the average commissions we're making here. And, and then the other thing I was going to say is, you know, on, on like uh, iPhone, you have the automatic uh, text responses that are already built in. The one that I hate is I can't talk right now. That's the automatic one. Do yourself yeah. a favor, go in there and change it. I'm so sorry. I'm in a meeting or I'm with a client right now. Do you mind if I give you a call back later? It's it just it's very simple to do that. But I can't talk right now. Sounds very abrasive. Mm -hmm. Yes. So think about it on that because they're like, well, if you're too busy, you know, that's like it sounds like you're, it, you want to be busy, but not sound like you're too busy. Or is what Chad is telling you. Okay, so we got captured. The next next number two is um, is uh, connecting. You know, I will tell you right now, it, uh, the, the old school, you know, Glenn Gary, Glenn Close video about the sales manager, right? ABC, always be closing. Oh, these leads are terrible. No, you're terrible. They wasn't using that word terrible, but you get, I was, I'm geeing it up for the, for, the, for the Zoom presentation here. But the bottom line is, is that you have to have the ability to connect. So between Chad, Adrian, and Lisa, let's talk about ways that we connect um, uh, you know, I'll tell you this, a lot of times I get inquiries via email and there's no phone number. I don't starting, I, 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 what I'll do is I'll say, yeah, I'll be happy to get that information for you. By the way, a quid pro quo, never ask for something unless you're willing to give it. So what I do is I respond back, even though my cell is in my signature box, I go, thanks. That's a great question. I'll be happy to get that information from you. My cell phone is 388-5466. What's a good number to reach you at? And then, you know, then once in a while, you're like, oh, I just want to talk, talk during, uh, I only want to communicate via email. So, but that's very far and few between. But um, initial contact. So what are the ways that we are connecting with our clients once, once we uh, uh, get a phone number, email, or text? Um, Chad, did you want to share an example? Ways well, to I was going to say that I try to gamify the thought process or the mindset of it is when I'm talking to somebody, I try to get as much information into command. Command has a thing where it's like, zero to 100%. So mm. the, the closer you fill the information that's available, and it could be things like, and this is extreme and, and further information like birth date and this kind of thing. So you don't have to start there, but at least having the yeah. basic information will start to kind of gamify your, uh, your, your status bar in terms of how complete that, that lead is, which is good because using that when it's complete, you can convert that to a, a smart plan and have the system work for you. Yeah, so in our instructor guide, we got these things called GKs, what does that stand for? Gary Kella. Anyway, he's got these little words of wisdom. He would, he, he, I was talking with him this morning. He wanted me to share this with you all. Your capturing should always focus on, wait, let me see if I can do it like Gary. Your capturing should always focus on getting enough information from someone so you can stay in contact with them. Okay? So that's from Gary Keller. All right. You got to do like this, though, when you, when you do it. You got to make the mustache. Oh, with the mustache. The yeah. mustache. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so capturing as many leads with complete contact information as possible is the goal. And then, so when we, when we get, because then you can't connect with them. Um, and always think about it this, you're auditioning for the chance to be their representative. You're auditioning for the chance to be their representative. So we've got five methods here. And between Lisa, Adrian, and Chad, you guys are going to help me with this one. Who wants to, who wants to explain what is mirroring and matching? Ah. Lisa, go I'll do that. So that mostly comes out of neurolinguistic programming, which was uh, a book writ written by Bandler and Grindler in the 70s, I want to say. It's really the psychology of if you are speaking too fast or too slow compared to the pace of the other individual, you make them feel uncomfortable. Or if you're not really in sync with them. So it's a way of syncing with them in terms of your body language and the speed and context of your voice. So yeah. I'll say if somebody like when we used to take floor calls, <laughs> I don't remember what those are. If somebody called and said, yeah, I'm calling for the address or I'm calling for the price of 123 Main Street. I go, okay, great. Thanks. It's just going to take me a second to find that. So I want to, you know, change their pace a little bit so I can ask them that question. What is it about that property caught your eye while I'm looking for that information? So um, you can use pacing of voice and mirroring to either match them and make them feel comfortable, or you can start to see how you can influence them and change their body language and their voice. Yeah. They, they, uh, they have you do this experiment where if you're at dinner with somebody when the restaurant's open back up again and we don't have a mask and we can see your face is 
mirror them when they grab for a glass of water. Every time they grab for a drink, you grab a glass of drink. And it'll, you, if you get really good at it to the point where you start reaching for the glass of water, and then they start following your lead, and then you guys are fighting to who's going to get to the restroom faster. Okay. So, uh, Adrian, how about you? Connecting with communication styles. And we, it's kind of, kind of what Lisa yeah. talked about. Connecting with communication styles. So, yeah, just like understanding. I mean, we're all familiar with the DISC. And understanding what your uh, prominent uh, pattern is or behavior style and you may, you're gonna to need to adjust that based on what you see from them. So if, you know, like if you're going on and on and on and you're dealing with someone who's very direct. Concise. Then that's, that, then that's yeah, that's gonna annoy them. And a lot of the times you can, you can kind of gauge on what, the, what, like what their disc style is based on what they do for a living. I mean, not always, but generally like if you're dealing with someone who is um, maybe like an engineer type, they yeah. gotta have a, a, a pretty high level of detail. And you know, you can count on them wanting to go deep and having all the data. So yes. yeah, so under, what, understanding that in your yeah. communication. Yep. For the engineers, just pepper in these three words, orbiter, jumper arm, flux capacitor, and cosines. Okay, um, uh, Chad, for you, ex how about this one, Chad? How do you exceed, this is the other, there's five methods for establishing rapport. Exceeding expectations. How do you exceed a buyer's expectations? Um, well, this kind of applies for, for anything, but um, first of all, I do what I, what I say I'm going to do. And whenever I have a conversation, whether it's an email, text, or especially a phone call, I always end it with uh, an action item that I'm promising them. Oops. And then I do that item. And then they know that, that that creates the trust part of it. So if I'm having a conversation with a, a buyer, I'll finish it up with, okay, just to make sure that I understand and we're on the same page, uh, what I'm gonna email you is this, this, and this, and I'm gonna text you this, and I'm gonna follow up with a phone call tomorrow at two o'clock, is that correct? Okay. And, and that's how you, you know, that's how I do it, and uh, it's been, it's, it's worked well. Can I just say one thing too, yeah, real quick, ahead. is to follow up on, on uh, Adrian's thing, there's a, in the book, um, there is a, a whole chart on the different yes. personalities and how they may act and yes. how your response should be, which, I, which definitely take a look at that, because it's amazing in the workbook, which we are providing to you all because we're an education company. And so, um, and I will tell you this, just by doing what you say you're doing is exceeding people's expectations because here's how commonplace society is. There's a reason why the dentist charged you $25 for not showing up for appointments because we know that in general, most people are flaky. You know, let's be real. Some of us agents can be kind of flaky. You know, you know, you, you listing agents when we try to call you to schedule a showing and it takes like nine calls, three text messages and us kicking your front door in to get that appointment or that showing. So by just me doing what you say you're going to do, it actually exceeds expectations because of what's more common in our, our everyday, everyday lives. Providing value, providing value. So providing value. I've got to tell you right now, you've got to figure out if I'm going to call you and five other buyer agents, why should I use you? What is your unique value proposition? Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. You know, is, is there anybody sharing in the chat? What is their unique value proposition, Chad? Anybody in the chat? No. Um, you know, when I first started, I said, hey, I'm, my name is Attilio. I'm a brand new realtor and, and I'm going to work my butt off to, to serve you at the highest level. And I highly recommend you work with me now because then the longer I've been in the business, I'm going to get kind of lazy. So it'd be good for you to like, work. and I would tell, and they would laugh, right? Because by the way, don't use humor. If humor is not something that's, that's your natural way to go. That was just what I would tell people. But you know what? I work my butt off for people even now, 10, 15 years later and, and exceed their expectations. Um, pretend that everything that you do with a client is either going to get you a one-star review or a five-star review. And again, I mean, that's not the reason to do it. If you serve people at the highest level, unless they're absolutely bonkers and crazy, they should be giving you a four or five star review. Okay, um, asking questions, asking questions. Open-ended open open questions. Open-ended questions. So I want you guys to type in open-ended questions that you could ask people because closed-ended questions ends the conversation. Oh, um, uh, you know, so the, the best open-ended question is, oh, you pre is not an open-ended, oh, are you pre-approved? No. Or yes, right? As opposed to saying, when you sat down with your lender, what did you tell you? What did they tell you? 
because the part of the rapport building process is having the conversation continue on in a natural pattern. Not like you're, um, you know, um, Inspector Clouseau or Sherlock Holmes and you're grilling them and it's the Spanish Inquisition when you're asking the questions. So, so, here, uh, so here's a couple open-ended yeah. questions from our group. What Thank about you. this from Kurt? What about this home interests you? And then from Michelle, she says, what about the neighborhood is important to you? And then Riley says, a good rule I follow for open-ended is to begin with them, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Nice. Uh, one of my favorite open-ended questions when I'm dealing with somebody that's worked with multiple agents, as I always ask them, you know, how did you murder your last agent? And why aren't you working with them now? And they laugh. You think I'm joking when I say, I tell them that. I'm like, you bought five homes, red flag, right? How can you know, why are you talking to me? And did you murder your last agent? Are you, are you with the Gambino family and you guys are just rolling into town to pick up uh, witness protection homes? So ask them, what happened with your last agent? You, you seem like a seasoned buyer because that's going to tell you. And then you know what I even do? I call that agent. Hey, is there anything I need to know? Do I need to like lock up all the sharp objects every time I do a consultation with this person? Yeah, there, I think the other, the soft approach to that is, uh, you can ask them what what did you like or what did you not like about your last real estate experience yes and you don't say about the agent or anything just about that experience what were some of yes. the things that you really liked about it and then what didn't you like and then that gives you kind of that blueprint of what not to do what to do more of but it also yeah. gives you an idea too whether you want to work with that buyer if the buyer says you know, I wanted to see a hundred homes and they only show me 99. That's probably <laughs> a client management problem too. And an expectation <laughs> issue. A red flag. <laughs> That's a red flag. It could be like, Hey, are you really interested in looking at homes or you just been home sheltering for a long time and had, and had, had, hadn't had any good human contact in a while. Um, so, Michelle says, what, what qualities are you looking for in your agent? That's quality, another good one. Yes. Yep. I'm looking for a reverse Mohawk. Um, uh, wearing fatigues when we go do showings because it's brutal out there and we got to hit the ground running. Uh, ask questions and the best and, and open-ended questions are the best, but to be organized in your approach, if you guys have your workbook, there's an excellent uh, lead sheet. The and, intake form. And you say, you mind if I go through a couple of things here with you? I just want to make sure that I'm on the same page with you. I understand your goals and your priorities. And then you say, I'm just going to you know, fill in some information real quick. And then it makes you sound organized and professional. And who here wants to, who here has clients, you know, who clients want to work with organized and professional people and using that lead sheet that's in your workbook, I think it's uh, page 35. Hey guys, and I just uploaded both the workbook and the toolkit. In nice. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. And, and here's another one from GK. That's his rapper name, by the way. His rapper name is GK. <laughs> So here's what GK told me this morning when I was talking to him. He said, your lead sheet is the most effective tool you have to gather essential information about your buyer. Okay. Um, Adrian mentioned it before. Ask people what they do for a living. Um, Tony Robbins talks about it. When you're trying to teach someone that's not done something before or not familiar with it, it's easier to bridge that learning gap by using analogies of things that they do understand. So, like I was talking with uh, uh, a nurse the other day and uh, about her home and, I, and um, you know, well, if I'm talking to him as a buyer, I use a lot of medical analogies. Well, you know, one of the things I want to introduce you to is my lender. His name's Tommy from Oahu Home Loans. And he's kind of like, you know, when we're part of a, when you ever go to the hospital, the surgeon's not coming out of the operating room to take your temperature and see if you got good insurance. He's just part of the process that helps me provide a high level of service. So I'm blowing up all that stuff about, oh, I don't have a team. You do have a team. We just introduced you to Tommy. And then what's his name? The pest control guy for my termite. These are all people that are on your team. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. What else I have from GK? The right approach to close for a meeting is the only approach. So we're going to get into, oh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, what percentage of the people that you're talking with are immediately going to want to buy a home? What's been your, ch Chad, what's been your experience? Like Lee comes in. Um, I, I'm going to be honest with you is, is probably it's very low. I mean, some yeah. of it is, and, and a lot of it is misunderstanding of where they are in, in relation to the market, what they actually qualify for. There's been a ton of, or some people 
we're on the path of renting. So in the consultation, because we come from contribution and, and I feel it's my job to educate them and consult mm -hmm. with them. So in that conversation, I've brought a lot of people from a one to a 5% to a 99% in terms of the, the heat meter of wanting to, to build that motivation. So if someone immediately goes, oh, I'm not, I'm not really in the, in the market to buy a home. You got to ask more questions to find out. They, they might have a misconception or a bias that's leading them to think that when it's not accurate. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I'll share with you, like with you guys, the very first um, transaction that I did was actually a renter. He was calling in on a rental and by educating and explaining how his BH works and that, you know, it was better for him to invest in himself than to pay some landlord was able to get him over that hump and into home ownership and to, you know, just, but, but through ed the education and the consultative approach, you know, again, you just, you gotta, you gotta build the trust and provide the plan and you know, it will usually come along. Yeah. One of the big tipping points that we had with a buyer, we just interviewed one of our successful buyer transactions is that I said, you know, did you ever have the realization that everybody is making a mortgage payment? By the way, Mr. and Mrs. Renter, I just want to let you know, everyone's making a mortgage payment. You're either making the mortgage payment on your own home or you're making the mortgage payment for the owner of your rental property. Would you agree with that? And they go, yes. And so when are we going to start getting you in a situation where you guys are making a mortgage payment for your own family? You know, that's, isn't that a heavy question to put upon someone and to just like, Hey, you know, and it, and I will tell you that buyer, she's like, as soon as I realized that, what was she doing? Um, Makana, she was like, she was adding up all the months of rent she yes. was paying until they close, until they get into the property. She was like, Oh my goodness. We're all in and, that, like, and that buyer, I admit, I originally met her with roller derby. With roller derby, and yeah. I met her at yoga class, a Hawaiian yoga class. So business is everywhere, and we helped her and her husband uh, just closed recently on their first time home buyers, even in this market. So a couple of things that you know we gotta address. We're in a really crazy. I don't know, is it going on Maui? Put it in the chat. Are you guys like having a like? Is it like a WMMA grudge match, cage match to get your buyers into escrow? Like you having to like, um, you know, flap the tires of the other agents who are visiting the unit so that you can get your offer in first. And, you know, you're shanking each other in the showers, you know, trying to put your offer in front of the broker. And I'm being funny about it, but it's, it's super competitive, right? Is it, is that what's going on on Maui? Somebody put that in the chat. Cause that's what's going on on Oahu. Chat in some that. areas and in yeah. some price points, not all. Not all areas. Yeah. It's like giving you the weather report for the whole island. Like that $67,000 leasehold property. Crickets People were shanking. not like yeah. trying to shank each other over it. No, they were not. They were all like, no, you go. They're like local people at a four-way stop. They're like, no, you go. No, you go. No, you go. No, you go. And then nobody leaves the four-way stop. Okay. So um, objections. Let's talk about objections because you know what? The market's super crazy right now. I'm just tired of competing. How would you, how would you address that? Lisa, Chad, Adrian. Well, can uh, I, I'll say one thing real quick is uh, yeah. especially you, you have to be an expert of your market. Whatever that mm -hmm. looks like. I mean, if the market is a buyer's market, if it's a seller's market, if it's a neutral market, you got to be, you know, have your, your ear to the pavement on that. But um, for, for me personally, everything starts with the right consultation. So when you're talking about, um, you know, getting them prepared for this, what I always tell them, especially in a market like this is, hey, listen, the market is absolutely bananas right now. And that's a good thing. Imagine when we go and sell and you're the seller and you get to choose yeah. from all these different offers. So we might not have uh, a successful uh, acceptance on the first one we write. We, we might not have one on the second or third, yeah. but on the sixth, seventh or eighth, we, maybe we'll get some success as we go through it. I, I tell them that up front because it can also be demotivating if you don't explain those kind of things to them because they mm -hmm. might write one or two offers and go, well, it's not meant to be. The universe has spoken and they yeah. draw their own conclusions. Here's the, um, and here's the other thing too, and, and why I want to like kind of rein it in with the horses is that there's seven different, was it seven or eight different steps here? I think it's seven. We're only covering the leap, the, the generation capture and then, and then schedule for an appointment. So here's the number one tip that we would give you folks. And then Chad and Lisa, you guys chime in. Why do we, you know, on the initial phone conversation, why do we not want to go through the whole buyer's consultation with them? Because we, we encourage our agents to save it for the consultation. What would be the downsides of that? Well, I, for, for me, I want to get their motivation. They're not, if they're sitting in their, in wherever they are and doing it over the phone, that they're not motivated to see me. Yeah. 
And, and you want, you know, if they have true motivation, it's going to spill over into an actual appointment to do a buyer consultation, because if you're just trying to do it on the fly and you're like driving or this or that, and you're not in a fully focused environment, you're going to miss things. You're going to miss things. And so Lisa, anything else on, on waiting to, to do the consultation and not doing it in trying in the initial appointment setting, or what are your thoughts? Well, so I, I think you've got to set it up with why it's a benefit to them. So I ask lots of open-ended questions. What have you been doing so far to find a home? What's your ideal time frame? You know, what are you ideally looking for? And then I'll go into, you know, here's how I work. And I'll say, I offer a free, no strings attached consultation where we sit down and we go through what's most important to you in a home, your lifestyle, the financial picture, and what would make you most comfortable in working with an agent through the process. Um, at the end of that, we're either going to decide to work together or not, and I don't take on every client. So it's got to be mutual. Would that be okay with you if, if it, it wasn't right for either one of us? We could just walk away with no pressure. I mean, that'd be fine. Yep. And so at the end of that, we'll decide whether we're going to work together or not. But I promise no matter what, whether we decide to work together or not, you'll get value out of that consultation because it will help you crystallize your wants and needs. And don't you think this is way too uh, important of a decision for you to just buy off of an open house and not have representation, somebody that's looking out for you. Yeah, excellent. I, like I wanna that. comment on something that came in the chat box and hear you guys. So uh, one of the questions was, what are some responses are, what are some of your responses to homes are overpriced right now? It's a great question. That's a great question. It. And first I mean, thing I do, Kurt, is I'd ask, um, why do you say they're overpriced? Yeah, I, 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 my version that? of that is tell me more about that. How do you mean? Because again, our habit is to just immediately answer, right? That's your habit, but you got to break that habit, break that habit and be operate as a top producing agent and say, tell me more about that and dig deeper. You should at least go three questions back to a question before you answer the question. Go three questions deep is our rule of thumb. Go ahead, Chad. You know, and, and I think Attila, you're absolutely correct because here's, here's the thing with that is you can answer there. You can give an answer to that and kind of sum it up, but we don't know what the motivation of that person is that's really asking. And what they could be, you could be assuming that that's where they're going and asking the right questions to dig a little deeper, like Atilio, you said, could get to, oh, well, I don't want to overpay. That could be their question. Mm -hmm. right. I don't want to overpay. Oh, great. No problem. You're not going to overpay. We have this thing called an appraisal and that appraisal comes, you know, and then you can explain that process to assure yeah. that you're not going to overpay. And that now resolves that, that whole question. Yeah. Or yeah, if someone yeah. is saying, if they're responding to like, there's 30 offers and everyone's overpriced and that, and you ask, and that's the real question. Now that answer is an entirely different answer than this. It is, and I have a supply and demand question or conversation with them oftentimes too. It depends on how they respond to that. But when they say, you know, people are paying too much for houses because they're overbidding, blah, blah, blah. And I say, so what I hear you saying is you would prefer to wait to buy a home when prices are going down instead of when they're going up. And then just shut up and let them sit with yeah. that for a little bit. Because, you know, the people that try to wait to time it, either buy at the height or they buy you know, they, bu they buy at the worst time. They're either buying at the height or they're buying at the bottom or selling at the bottom and they're never yeah. gauging it perfectly. Yeah. The market you buy in is a market you sell in. Yeah. And the other thing I tell people is just, if it's, if it, this is the time for you and your family and it's the right time to buy, then buy. And we'll come up with the strategies to make sure and guarantee that you're not going to be overpaying for a home. And so that would be the answer. But here's the one thing that I know when someone asks a question, there's always questions behind it. And, and the other thing I want you guys to make a mental note of, human beings, when we're communicating with each other, I'll even tell you, even with your significant other, they're not really telling you what they're thinking. The most famous trap, it has killed more men than most of the wars combined, is this one question. Do I look fat in this dress? And you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Are you saying that you asked that question of Adrian? I have asked that question many times of my significant others. Do, do I look fat in this dress? <laughs> and, um, um, and so you got to be, the, the point being is that we, 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 you know, and those kind of questions with significant others turn into World War III arguments, right? So if you, <laughs> if you think if it's going to go that bad with somebody you know and love, how do you think it's going to go with a stranger when we don't delve deeper to fully understand why are they asking that question? So the best objection handler out there uh, in general, period, is a question, is answering a question with another question. But don't sound, you got to be careful, though, because if you're doing I'm the it master all, of that. Yeah, if you're doing it all the time, it's, <laughs> it's called obfuscation. There's your, I just blew my 50 cents per word of the day today, all in one word, obfuscation. And, 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 and so you want to be able to 
So what else? You know, some of the big one is, well, what are your commissions? You know, on the list side, on the buy side. Hey, Let, let's go on the buy side because yeah. we hear this and it's really like it just irks me. This one. Well, I'm just gonna. Um, I've got a bunch of agents working for me, and yeah. I'm just gonna work with the agent that finds me the home first. Yeah, I'm gonna throw the hamburger out there, and it's I'll throw it in the cage with the, with all the MMA or, buyer agents and whoever comes. Or I'm out. just gonna call the listing agents and yeah. have them write the offer for me. Well, and and so it's not in here, but it's another form that we love, and it's called the buyer's rep agreement. But that's gonna be more in the consultation. But I will tell you this, and we'll you'll, you'll cover it in that. But that buyer's rep agreement. But those are um, gonna be some objections though that you're gonna get prior to that appointment. Yeah. And when you uh, get into the motivation. Well, you know, and then I go, Mr. and Mrs. Byer, let me ask you something. What do you do for a living? So I always start off with what do you do for a living if I haven't even found it out? Oh, um, I, you know, I work at, uh, let me give you an example. Um, you know, I'm in the, um, um, I work at, I, I'm a general manager of Long's Drugs. And I said, well, uh, what if I was a, a consumer that came to you and said, oh, you know what? Uh, I come in over here and I'm looking for toilet paper, but, you know, I'm not sure if I want to buy from you guys because I might go Target, I might go Walmart, I might go all over the place. You can be like, okay, go. You know, when you're ready to buy our toilet paper, come back over here. So use analogies and you got to be able to think on your feet because it's like, would you want to work with that person? You know, like um, not signing paperwork. You know, if you, if you, when you went to rent a car, whenever the last time it is that you rented a car, did they just like, oh yeah, they just blew the keys out you over the counter and say, go for it. We don't need to do any paperwork. There's going to be paperwork because it's about managing expectations. So any other objections in the, in the, in the, or questions or objections we need to handle. What about the the buyers that just want to, they just want to see the home. They don't want to do the, the, they just want, they're pre-approved. I'm all cash buyer. I just want to see the home. Yeah. I just tell them, you know, unfortunately with uh, um, our company's policy is that before I meet with you and you could be a possible serial killer, I need to meet in a professional office environment or via zoom so I can get to know you a little bit better. But basically what I tell them is that in today's COVID, I love, I don't love the pandemic because it's harming a lot of people, but it's giving us a great way to lock and load and tell people because of COVID-19, sellers are requesting that we make sure that we are not bringing people to their home that are not 100% motivated and have the ability to buy their home. Must be pre-approved. So I've got to get, I've got to keep my promise and my credibility as a professional agent to go through this process with you. And, and the last thing I want to do is, is, is uh, uh, just rush into this process the, of a decision that's going to be with you for the next 30 years. Would you agree? And they go, yeah. So, you know, with 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock later on today, and by the way, it's very rare that when you're talking in that moment, are all the decision makers, like, listening in on that phone call? No. So you don't even know if all the decision makers are in that moment. And you're going to say, and by the way, are there other decision makers that we need to make sure? The other thing I will tell you, and this has already happened even with myself the other day, if you're doing a Zoom consultation or video conference, ask them if, if they've ever used Zoom before. So this is like adapting and it's not in this workbook, but we're telling you this is real life stuff. Ask them if they've used Zoom before. Oh yeah, I use Zoom. Oh wow, okay. And then what was the last Zoom you did? Because it'd be like, it's like saying, oh, uh, you know what an IRA is? Oh yeah, I know what an IRA is, but they don't know what an IRA is. So what was the last one you did? Make sure that they have a download on the device they're going to use. Ask them if they're going to be stationary. I literally got a listing. I'm I, I motivated and I'm good, but I was doing it with a lady and she was at the beach with her 11 month old child. Still got the <laughs> listing, but I was like, ah, we should have confirmed with her that she was going to be stationary in front of a and computer focus. and focus. But um, we, 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 we got that anyway, because the last agent didn't want to email her stuff. It was actually mailing her stuff via us mail. So anyway, uh, so we still have, on the technology. We have four minutes okay. left. And we're so. almost, we're actually, we're pretty much done. Okay, I'll just keep the, the timekeeper here. We're not doing role plays and we're not having you guys call leads. So pretty much we were at the end of the appointment. So um, have a script for what you guys do. Um, the LP mama, Adrian, can you cut and paste it in the thing so people can cut and paste it? Who, who here can come off of mute and tell me what LP mama stands for? Chad, do you know what it is? Lisa, LP mama? Well, I'll give it to you guys right now. L stands for location. P stands for price. M stands for motivation. A stands for agent. M stands for mortgage. And A stands for the appointment. 
you've got to have categories of which you have questions ready to go to take people through that conversation. And I will tell you, no matter what this or that or whatever, if you can get something. Now, people say, I don't like using scripts. Well, you know, I don't like using scripts. That's a script. So I would tell you, get the LP Mama script and practice it every day. And then that's how you lead through this capture, connect, cultivate, and close to appointment. By the way, Chad or Lisa, can you talk about KW Command and how KW Command and help automate the cultivation aspect of this process? Absolutely. So once you meet somebody, you've got a whole range of smart plans that you can put them on so that your daily to-do list becomes um, set up based on how your engagement is pre-planned. So you can set up drip emails, you can set up reminders to call them, to text them, to um, anything. So we've got eight by eights, we got 16. He's got all kinds of plans you can put in place depending on the category of lead, client, or connection. Yeah. One of the things we'll share with you guys is that leverage doesn't mean you have an assistant. You can use technology to leverage and, and Keller Williams is really awesome and all the money that Gary Keller's committed to this technology. Um, literally, you know, there's technology out there that you're spending, you know, hundreds of dollars per month that Gary gives to you for how much? So um, that's it. Um, we got two minutes left, Chad, Lisa, Adrian, because we're wrapping it up. I'll say one thing real quick um, is, you know, one, one objection handler uh, to get people to a consultation is if they're asking a lot of questions, the, the one thing I'll just say is that's a great question. That's exactly why we need to get together. Um, yeah. Or to get them to that consultation, this is me personally, is I like to talk about strategy. There's so much data, so much information. I want to talk about sales price, list price ratio, what's happening in a certain market. So let me pull some data so we can sit down and I can show you how you can save some money and how we can strategize for uh, an accepted offer. And that clearly tells them they can't do that over the phone right then and there. Mm -hmm. you got, I got to pull information for you. You got to do the research. Yeah, I'll tell you right now. For them. Having more experience and more knowledge is actually a disadvantage. And you're like, Atelier, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because you know what I find with our brand new agents? If I tell them, don't answer the questions right there and just write them down and tell them you're gonna cover them in the presentation, nine times out of 10, they don't even know the answer to the question in that moment anyway, and they need that pause to go to the appointment and do some pre-research. So even as a seasoned agent, even if you know the answer, you should be saying, what else? And then writing it down, what else? It's kind of like Jimmy Fallon with his thank you notes. What else? And then you're doing that. What else? And then, you know what? Great. I'm going to cover all of those questions when we get together on our buyer consultation. And then, and then making sure that the right people are going there. And by the way, that's going to be at two o'clock, send them a text message, blah, blah, blah. And say, you know, and then one of the things I always put out there and say, by the way, um, I, I know that your, your time is very valuable. So I just want to let you know that when I book this appointment with you, it's solid that I'm going to be there for sure. Can I count on you? Can I count yeah. on you? Yeah. You're not one of those people that say well, that they're going <laughs> well, to the show like, up in oh, the notes. This one you got to be careful of, but I've used this before with the high Ds. And I say, <laughs> Joey, you're not one of those people. That, and when I have a good report, you're not one of those people that books appointments with people and then you don't, you don't go to the appointment. You're not one of those guys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Because when the appointment is coming and they're thinking about canceling, they're like, dang it. I told Atilio, I wasn't one of those flaky people that cancels last minute or no show, no calls. I got to go to this appointment. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. We're at the 200. Chad, you want to bring us home? Thanks, guys. I appreciate you all jumping in. Uh, this is a series, so we'll have it every single week. Please join us. Next week, we have uh, the pleasure of having, I think, it's Adrian and Atilio again. Oh, we um, are? So okay. Yeah. Prepare for the buyer consultation. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, guys, please join us next week. This will be recorded uh, and sent out. So, thank you so much and make it a great rest of your day. Aloha. Bye, guys. Hi. Aloha from Maui, everyone. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.